Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. <laughs> This week versus the Philadelphia Eagles, the Miami Dolphins will have to make sure they put touchdowns on the board to fully put this team away. And I'm going to show you how they can be successful in the green zone. That's from the 10-yard line going in, red zones from the 20 going in, and blue zones from the 30-yard line going in. You just learned something here on Football Game Plan. So winning inside the green zone, I love to spread the football field, especially when you're facing the 3-4 defense because it throws off their rush responsibilities and it expands their coverage responsibilities. And by throwing off their rush responsibilities, what I mean is as a quarterback, you then can identify where you can go with the football. So for Ryan Tannehill, that's ideal. You now, now can be able to decide, okay, if they're gonna send four or five, but really what we're gonna do is gonna boot him out on his play. Um, and you see we've expanded the coverage with ways, or let's say horizontally, outside the numbers, we put the wide receiver and we're gonna slowly work him in. So we're gonna move him up on the line, move him down. We're going to bring him in a little short motion. We're going to make sure he's aligned right with the safety. And when we snap the football, he's going to push up as if he's going to crack back on this linebacker. And then he's going to go to the corner. We're going to have this receiver work up here as if he's going to crack on this backer. He's whipping right back out to the flat. And that's why we're rolling Ryan Tannehill out. Tight end is going to show block. If nobody's coming, he's going to work short crosser or a shallow cross. Receiver on the backside is working up to the post. So if you're Ryan Tannehill and he's blocking back here, if you're Ryan Tannehill, your reads are going to be touchdown to check down. You're going to read one, two, maybe three if you have time. But essentially, three and four could be your own athleticism. You could turn it up and run for a touchdown and let these guys become pseudo blockers. So this is what you're going to do because, again, that whip route will pull this linebacker in here. And now you're going to have guys haul and tail trying to get outside to cover this out route thus opening up for the backside crosser and you also still can get one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the safety because you're going in up into the corner easy read for Ryan Tannehill easy way to get six on the board inside the 10-yard line I think this is one way they can keep pace offensively this week versus Philadelphia versus the Miami Dolphins I'm gonna show you how the running game of the Philadelphia Eagles can help set up the passing game and by running two plays in one we know Chip Kelly loves to package plays I'm show you what I'm talking about here and as they run let's say weak side or strong side let's say weak side with this running game pulling offensive linemen we're gonna read this backside in so as you start to run weak side teams will start to cheat over a little bit and overset toward that side which puts you in perfect position to run two plays in one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna block it here, we're gonna block up, we're gonna have the center block back, we're gonna pull both the guard and the tackle here. So now, this is essentially the play. You're running the zone here, behind a pulling guard and tackle. And what you're reading is this defensive end. If this guy chases it, you pull it and you're running your quick screen because now you have two blockers out here. He's gonna outrun this backer and that's essentially what you want. However, if this guy stays and just kind of sits and reads the quarterback, then you give it because now you have the advantage. You don't have this extra guy chasing the running back uh, behind the play and now he can definitely run the daylight. He's blocking here, but you have two plays in one. He's reading the defensive end. I like this play inside the 20. I think this is a great opportunity, especially versus the Miami Dolphins football team that will probably come into this game a little bit over aggressive. So a play like this could definitely bite them in the butt. This is a great way I think the Philadelphia Eagles can put points on the board inside the red zone versus the Miami Dolphins. I like the Eagles in this ball game. I think defensively, both teams will come ready to play. I like the Dolphins' defensive line. I think they'll have some success early on versus Philadelphia. But at the end of the day, if I had to trust an offense to get past that pressure point of a ball game, I can trust Philly's offense more so than I can trust Ryan Tannehill back there in the pocket. So I think the Eagles win a close one over Miami. Oh, 
Dolphins and Eagles is up next. My X Factor for the Dolphins is going to be Jarvis Landry. They really need to use him on those short routes, uh, the slants and, and different in-breaking routes. That is the way to beat the, the Eagles secondary. Get him the football, allow him to catch it and run. It's something that happened last week with Des Bryant. He was able to beat Maxwell on a series of slant routes. So the Dolphins need to continue that. Ryan Tannehill, he likes to throw the short pass. Give him the chance to do what he likes to do and get the ball to his playmaker, Jarvis Landry. As far as the Eagles are concerned, my X Factor is the two-headed monster. You got Ryan Matthews and, of course, DeMarco Murray. Those two are combining to, to get over 100 yards uh, rushing per game. The Dolphins' defense is giving up, I think it's 142 per game. So the opportunity is there for them to do what it is that they do best. Let's keep in mind Chip Kelly's offensive screen scheme excuse me, is to spread them out and run forward. So that's what they want to do, north and south running. Ryan Matthews is very strong on that. DeMarco Murray is still breaking out. So I think that the Eagles can win this game over the Dolphins at home. I have the Eagles winning 20 to 14. The Miami Dolphins faced the Philadelphia Eagles who got a big victory on Sunday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys. Now my start here is going to be Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill is going to be tasked with, you know, managing the game but also using his legs more often. That's one thing that he has not done recently, and I think they realize he's not a pocket passer. He's a guy who needs to get out on the edge, and he can take advantage of a defense that happens to be leaky on the exterior, not on the anterior. As far as the sit, it's going to be Lamar Miller. Sounds silly, but I think they put the ball in Myron Tannehill's hands. Again, let him manage the game, but also let him make most of the plays. And this defense is stout up front for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, with guys like Fletcher Cox in the middle and Brandon Graham coming off the edge. As far as a start for the Philadelphia Eagles, it is DeMarco Murray. He's starting to get going, and even though they're doing some of those sweep actions with him, they're pulling a the guard, getting him out in front. I think Mark Murray's getting used to what they require of him in this offense. As far as a sit, it's virtually my sit every week. Even with a late overtime touchdown, Sam Bradford still didn't put up great fancy numbers. He is my sit every week until this offense changes to fit his passing style. Uh, my sleeper here is Darren Sproles, though. The reason is Darren Sproles is because of everything that he does do. They haven't utilized him much recently. I think they get back to utilizing him as a changeup, also in the passing game. Final result here, I think the better team wins, and that is the Miami Dolphins, 23-20. to 20.